Hey, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a while since we've been together. And I thought before we started section 4.3, let's do a little review. So we're going to do two problems that deal with translations and then two reflection problems. So let's do the first one. So get out a piece of paper, please. And let's say we've got point B. And it's at negative 4, 6. Now, if you want to do a rough sketch, you can. Let's plot that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, negative 4, 6. So left and up. And we're going to translate this point using this rule. Now, <clears throat> do we remember what this rule says? This rule says, take your point. Then the arrow means move your point. Following this rule, and this says add 10 to your x value. Well, if you put negative 4 right there and add 10 to it, you get 6. All right, so it says add 10 to your x value and then take your y value and subtract 6. So let's take our y value put it in there, 6 minus 6 is 0. Now our new point isn't called B anymore, it's called B prime. So when you see that little tick mark, we say prime. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0. So here's B and here's B prime. Now, some of you might not want to do the algebra. You might just want to use your um, graph. And hey, that's wonderful. So for those of you who just like to use your graph, when you're adding, that means go to the right. When you're subtracting over here, that means go down. So some of you on your graph paper, you might have just said, well, I'm going 10 to the right and down 6. Either way will get you the answer. Okay, let's try this one. C is at 8, negative 3. So let's draw the point, and then we'll translate it. Okay, now let's look at our rule. It says take your point, move it, following this rule. And it says subtract 2 from your x value. Well, let's put our x value there. What's 8 minus 2? pretty easy, right? And then it says take your y value and add 3. So let's put our y value. Oh, I didn't mean to get the same point as we did here, but we did. Yay! Okay, so we've got 6, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0. C prime. Now for some of you, you didn't do all of this rigmarole. You're counting. You know that this means go to the left 2 and up 3. So a lot of you probably just went 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. Again, whatever works for you. Now, on your transformation rule sheet that you were supposed to copy, the translations are right here. And so then I reminded you if you're adding to your x value, you're going to the right. If you're subtracting, you're going to the left. To your y value, if you're adding, you go up. If you're subtracting, you go down. So translations are what we just did, and that's when we slide something. Okay, now let's do reflections. Alrighty, here are our reflection rules. Let's First thing we're going to do is let's plot three. Okay, what I would like to do is I would like to reflect it over the x-axis. So reflect over the x-axis. Now that's called our line of reflection, and I always like to highlight that with yellow. Okay, now if you are a formula person, you're going to look at your formulas. And let's see, right here it says over your x-axis. Now let's write this down and talk about what this means. So on your reflection sheet, this is what it says. Okay, this means 
that your xy now becomes x negative y. So that means you're going to take the opposite of your y value. So let's, let's look at this. Our point is 3, negative 4. Okay, so our x is the same as this, so our x is 3. And the opposite of y, well if y is negative 4, the opposite of negative 4 is positive 4. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, and here is d prime. Now again, some of you don't like to use these formulas, and that's fine, you don't have to. Some of you are saying, well, let's see, d is 4 below my yellow line, so d prime has to be 4 above my line, and you're absolutely correct. Okay, we're going to try two more. Let's say point E is at uh, negative 7, 2, and we're going to refer Select over the line y equals x. So let's plot our point first. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2. Okay. Now, we need to know where is this line. And if you've been watching the videos every day, you already know where that line is, don't you? So let's go back here. The line of reflection, if you have the line y equals x, we're going to draw a little picture here. Here's our x and our y axis. The line y equals x is a nice little diagonal line that just cuts our coordinate plane in half. And here's the rule. If you're going to reflect over the line y equals x, you put your y value first and your x value second. So let's, let's look at this. Let's write down our rule. So notice you're just kind of swapping them. So we have negative 7, 2. Okay, now the rule says put your y value first. Okay, well our y value was 2. And then write your x value. Okay, now let's, let's draw in our line of reflection here. And again, I like to make mine yellow. And so this is going to flip over that yellow line. So I'm going to plot these to the right 2 and down 7. Now if I would fold my paper on this line, and I didn't have graph paper, but man, I'm pretty darn close. My points are landing. Look at that. They're landing right on top of each other, and that's what should happen. Now let's make sure we say this is E, and then this is E prime. Okay, so that's what we did before the break. We did translations and reflections, and then we had a quiz over that. Today what we're going to do is we are going to do rotations. Okay? Now, you can turn things clockwise or counterclockwise. Counterclockwise means you're turning to the left. And clockwise, you're turning to the right. Okay? Now let's look at this. We have to know what this means. R stands for rotation. And then 90 degrees <coughs> is how many degrees we're going to rotate something. Okay? So here's what it would look like. Let's say, let's see, I've got here, I've got two pens. Now here's a, they're making a 90 degree angle. And um, let me see here. I'm going to put, I'm going to actually put a little dot right here on my pen. Now if I were to rotate this 90 degrees clockwise, look what, watch where my point ends up. It ends up like right here. So it was here and then it goes here. Now if I'm rotating it another 90 degrees, look where it goes. Rotating it. There we go. So now it's over here and it started over here. Actually let's, we'll say this is our original point. Okay, so it rotated 90 degrees and it landed up here. Now it's down here. 
Now if I rotate it again, let me kind of shove my pens upward. It's down here now. So that's all we're going to be doing is we're going to be rotating. Now, 90 degrees, ladies and gentlemen, let's draw a little picture here. Let's say if you're in quadrant one and you rotate 90 degrees, it moves you one quadrant over. So write yourself a note. Let's, let's put 90 degrees rotation moves a point one quadrant over. And I didn't say over to the left or right because it depends if you're turning counterclockwise or clockwise. So if you're moving 180 degrees, well that's 90 twice, right? So an 180 degree rotation moves a point two quadrants over. And then if you have a 270 degree rotation, well 270 is 90 plus 90 plus 90, that's three quadrants over. Okay? Now in your book, your author focuses on counterclockwise turns only. So we're going to be focusing on these three formulas. Okay? All right. I'm going to show you how this works. But before I do, get your notes out, please. If you don't have a printer, that is just fine. Just get out a piece of paper and write section 4.3 on top. And then you should pause the video and write down all of these. So ladies and gentlemen, what is a rotation? Well, a rotation is when we turn something and we turn it around a fixed point. So like, here's our fixed point and that has a special name. It's called the center of rotation. And this is what's happening. So let's say that I have, here's my pen. Okay, we're going to say, or no, hold on here. <coughs> I'm just going to do it right here. Where'd my point go? There's my point. Okay, so right here where my fingernail is, that's our center of rotation. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this pen and watch where that point goes. If I turn it, see? I just made a rotation. So look at that. I'm rotating it the other way now. Okay, so when you turn something around a fixed point, it's called a rotation, and that fixed point is called the center of rotation. So that is our fixed point. Okay, now let's focus on this point right here, R, and let's, let's kind of make it a little darker. There's point R right there. And we're turning it, whoop, and it lands right over here at R prime, okay? Now, the angle that's between those, that's called your angle of rotation, okay? <clears throat> so we'll just say 40 degrees. Now let's talk about some rotation properties. You can turn something counterclockwise, CCW, counterclockwise, or CW, clockwise. Okay, counterclockwise means rotating it to the left. Clockwise means rotating something to the right. <clears throat> when you rotate something, let's say it's a shape, the shape stays the same. When you rotate something, a shape doesn't all of a sudden get bigger. I mean, like, look at this um, triangle right here. It was here, and then we rotated it here. It's the same shape, and it's the same size. Okay? All right. Uh, again, rotations can be clockwise or counterclockwise, so let's just put CW so you know what that stands for, and then counterclockwise, the CC. 
CW. Okay, but your author just focuses on counterclockwise, all right? Okay, now how in the world do you find this special angle? How do you do that? Well, let's look at two rectangles. All right, now where's our pre-image? Our pre-image is the one that doesn't have the prime. So here's our pre-image. And then it looks like it was rotated upward, okay? And we have to figure out how many degrees. Well, here's what you're going to do. Focus on a certain corner, A, B, C, or D. It doesn't matter. I'm going to just choose B, okay? So first thing I want you to do is I want you to highlight B and then highlight the corner of B prime, okay? And let's, let's just make those points a little bit bigger just so they jump out at us. Okay, now to figure out the angle of rotation, it's really easy. What you do is you connect your center of rotation to B and to B prime, and then you just measure this. Now I'll tell you what, I'm guessing that most of you do not have a, um, oh gosh, what the heck is that thing called now? I'm having a brain fart. Um, Oh, people, it's terrible when you get old. Um, <laughs> what is that? Protractor. Okay. I don't have a protractor, so I'm just going to make a really darn good guess. To me, that looks like it's maybe almost 90 degrees. I'm going to say it's about 88 degrees. That's, that's just a guess. And then I'm going to show that I'm rotating it to the left. All right? Now, notice what happens if we connect another corner to our center of rotation. Let's, uh, I'm going to focus on D this time. The D and the D prime. Now I'm going to make D and D prime just a little darker here. And we should have the same angle. And let's connect it with another color. So I'm going to say D prime to our center of rotation. Whoops, I missed it a little bit. But look at that. Again, it's, it's the same. It, to me, it looks like it's almost 90. Okay? All right, let's try another one. Okay, pick a corner. Any corner, doesn't matter. I think I'm going to pick R. And then R prime. So I'm going to make those points just a little bit darker. I'm going to connect P with R and then P with R prime. Okay, now let's see here. How big is that? Well... Right from here to here is 90. This looks like a, maybe it's like half a 90, maybe 45. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna just make a nice little hypothesis. I'm gonna say that's about 135 degrees. And again, this was our pre-image. We haven't talked about this lately. Let's let's make sure we use our vocab. Pre-image is like before, and then image is after. Okay, so it made a 135 degree turn. In which direction it went? this way, and so that would be clockwise, okay? And this was 88 degrees counterclockwise. Okay, now how do you do this on your own? How, how would you come up with pictures like we just used? Let's look at this example number two. It says rotate angle, or excuse me, rotate triangle FGH 50 degrees counterclockwise about point C. Well, I've got the step-by-step -step directions on how to do that, so let's read them. So it says, to find the image of point G, draw C to G and draw a 50 degree angle. Find G prime so that C to G equals C prime to G, C to G prime. I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to read this again and I'm going to look at the picture to find out like what exactly are Okay, this can't be that hard, right? So let's let's look at what they're doing. Now, first of all, I took a highlighter. I highlighted my point of rotation. So I think you should do that. All right, now they're going to find G prime. So let's see what it says. To find the image of point G, draw C to G. 
Okay, all right, so they're just connecting C to G. Okay, and then draw a 50 degree angle. So what they're doing now, right here, they drew this, and then they drew a 50 degree angle. Okay, I'll make that a little bit bigger here. All right, then what they did is they measured C to G, and then they took, so let's, let's take a ruler, My paper's not that big, so let's see here. C to G looks like it's know, like five millimeters. And so then what they did over here is they just went up the same length to five millimeters. All right, that gave us this point of G prime. All right, now to find the image of point H, you do all this all over again. So now they connected C with H. Okay. Then they made a 50 degree angle here. All right. And then they measured from C to H. Now look where that is. And then they went out here and went the same length and just put a point. And then they did that with F. Okay, we can do this. So we're just going to follow these directions. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight my um, point of point of rotation, and let's do let's figure out where a prime would be first. So the first thing we have to do, I would get a straight edge of some sort if you have it. Let's connect a with our center. Oopsies. There we go. Okay. All right. Now we want to go 100 degrees. Okay. Well, I'm going to get a pencil here for this. Now let's see. This would be 90 degrees, right? And of course, my stupid camera is not working again. I'm telling you, folks. We can send a man to the moon, but we cannot give teachers cameras that work. Okay, let's see. This is 90, but we need 100, so just a little, little bit more, right? Okay, so now I'm going to erase this. There we go. So I made that really long. Okay, now I have to measure x to a, and then I'll go x to a prime. So, x to a is to this line right here, okay. All right, I'm going to erase all of this. So there's my a prime. All right, yay. Okay, now let's, let's find out where c would be. So now let's do... Okay, we have to connect. This is not fun, is it? We have to connect C with X. Okay. Oops, so C to X. Now we want to do 100 degrees. So now I don't want your brain to see anything except this line right here, okay? All right, now I'm just... Again, I'm just kind of eyeballing things. Now, I just drew a 90 degree angle, but we're doing 100 degrees. So now I'm going to bump that out just a little bit more. Okay, so there we go. So I'm going to erase this. Okay, now I have to measure X to C. I think I'll do this in millimeters. Oh, it's three right in the money. Okay, so now I have to go out here, three. Are you having fun yet? I'm not having fun. I hate doing these. <laughs> so now there's C prime. Okay. This isn't hard, is it? It's just a it's just a pain. It's tedious. Okay. I think I'll just erase that. Okay, now I've got to go B to X. Okay, B to X. Okay, now the only thing we want to see. Don't let your brain see anything except this line. 
Okay, now 100 degrees. Let's see, this would be about 90 right here, so we're going to bump that out a bit. Okay, now I've got B to X, that's three and a half. Now I'm going to go out here, three and a half. So B prime. Whew. B to C. No, I don't like this drawing at all, because look at if I connect them. This does not look like this. Well, that's just wonderful. Where did I screw up? I'm going to have to. I'm not going to give up. All right. You know what I'm going to do, though? I'm not going to give up. I'm going to jump ship. I'm going to do this on GeoGebra instead. It is so much easier. And so I'm going to make a quick video on this today. You want to watch it. It does the whole thing for you because that, that was a pain. So I'm going to stop the video right now. And um, we're going to go to GeoGebra. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to make rotations. But before I do that, you need to know your homework, right? So let's see here. Let's go in your notes. We're at 4-3, day 1. Look at that. There's only four problems, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so um, after you watch this video, watch the next video because I'm going to show you how to do GeoGebra rotations.